After the patient has been seated and anesthetized, the rubber dam process starts. With all of our supplies nearby, I begin by punching the holes in my rubber dam. We are working on number 14, or the 2-6, fixing a broken cusp so this dam will be a quadrant dam. Starting with the largest hole in our rubber dam punch, I punch a hole for where our clamp will be. I always use the biggest hole for the tooth I'm going to be clamping. Once that tooth has been punched, I move the hole punch down one size for number 14 or the 2-6 where we are going to be working. For the remaining teeth in the quadrant, I go down one hole size and punch the rest of the holes. Then, with a 2x2 two two that has isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol on it, I wipe the stamped ink off of the rubber dam. Our favorite dental dam clamp to use on a fully erupted molar is the Ash PWUK clamp. It is our favorite because it can be used in any quadrant and is pretty universal. The bow of the clamp is then inserted through the biggest hole with the bow coming through from underneath and sticking out of the hole. A very important step needs to be completed before the dam is placed. Using the blue true contact saw, each contact is groomed to optimize it before flossing the dam between the contacts. Being careful not to cut the patient's gum with the saw, I run the true contact saw through each contact. The true contact saw is also a nice gauge to help know how tight each contact is, if there are any ragged or rough contacts from previous restorations, and it will remove any debris from in between the teeth as well. Once the contacts have been optimized, I grab the clamp with the dental dam forceps with the dam draped behind the clamp. With the patient opened wide, I place the clamp on the farthest molar back and release it from the forceps. To secure the clamp fully, I place pressure on both jaws of the clamp, pushing it down apically to ensure the clamp does not come off. I then place a white dental dam napkin on the patient, pulling the corners of the dam through the hole of the napkin and then over it. The napkin is used to protect the patient from any moisture that could ensue during the procedure. Once the napkin is in place, the frame of the dam is brought in to grab the top two corners of the dam first, and then the bottom two next. Being careful not to pull the dam too tight, each corner of the dam is secured in the frame loosely. A blunt instrument is then needed to drape the dam over the jaws of the clamp. The Clark Curved Sculpting Paddle is the perfect instrument to use because it is blunt and has a curve to it that makes it very easy to wrap the dam around the jaws of the clamp. I always want to make sure that the clamp is secure, so I press on the jaws one last time, and then the corners and sides of the dam can be pulled tight. With the foundation set, I can now start to floss each hole around the teeth. It is easiest to start with the midline tooth. In this case, that is number nine, or the two one. I begin by pulling open the hole to start and fitting it around the tooth and around the lateral as well. Then with my floss, I begin to floss the dam down around the tooth. It is easy to rip a dental dam, so it is important to remember that you are pulling the dam down by flossing between the tooth and the dam. The biggest mistake people make is that they try to force the dam down by flossing directly on the rubber dam. If you do that, you will end up with a tear. Once I have flossed down once, I leave my floss in place and use the longer section of my floss to wrap and floss down again, 
and then I pull the floss out, of the, out the side. I then continue by working my way back towards the clamp, flossing each tooth as I go. Sometimes it is easiest to floss the distal of one tooth and then floss the mesial of the, the adjacent and pull the floss out of the side. Once I have flossed each tooth, I use a dental mirror to inspect that each segment of my dental dam has been flossed fully. If any spots look like they still need to be flossed more, I floss in that area again and then I check with my mirror. Lastly, I use the Clark Explorer to invert my dam on the lingual. While pulling the dam taunt, I then invert the buckle side. One last inspection of everything with my mirror is then done to make sure that the dam is finished. 